Hello, world, and welcome to the For Your Best Self podcast. It's dermatologist Dr. Saluja, and today I'm proud and pleased to host the wonderful Maxwell Pauling, certified physician assistant. Max has joined our Synergistic Dermatology plus Plastic Surgery team and is here to talk about himself, yeah. what he's able to help you with on your journey and invite you to his clinic and our modern practice. Uh, Max, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your training, your past yeah. experience. So uh, I originally actually did my training up in uh, North Florida in Jacksonville. I graduated from Nova Southeastern University and uh, I did most of my training in plastic surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. Uh, from that point, I went on to private practice dermatology in St. Augustine, and at that point, I did a lot of general dermatology as well as dermatological, uh, really, you know, surgical cases. Uh, I would do many of the Mohs closures for that and just a lot of surgical procedures in general. Then I ended up moving back to Brevard County where I, um, uh, actually before that, I ended up co-founding a practice down in South Florida and an aesthetic dermatology practice. And then I ended up moving back to Brevard County uh, back in 2020, uh, really to be back with family. And um, it was kind of nice just to be back in your home roots, get back to going surfing and, you know, even playing a little bit of golf at Spessard Holland where I grew up. Very, very nice. Yeah. So tell us about your family and hobbies. Yeah. So I'm an avid surfer. I actually really? grew up. Yeah. Yep. My dad first put me on a surfboard when I was three years old. And so grew up surfing Sebastian and let um, it's it's I actually still it's beautiful he, there, yeah. he gave me the surfboard that I first learned on and now I get to teach my daughter. Oh, um, my yeah. daughter's a sweetheart and uh, she's it's it brings a whole new meaning to family that I never knew before. Right. Um, but I have my wife, uh, my daughter Olivia, and our dog Doke, who's a Vishla. I'm not a my my wife. She went to Florida State. I went to UCF as an undergrad. And most people are always gonna think Doke Campbell Doke Campbell Stadium. Uh, and of Florida course, State, but it was. That was her her role. She said if she got to name the dog, I got to name the first kid. She That's got a to good name trade off. She got to name both. Okay, okay, not a <laughs> not a trade off. <laughs> not a trade off. Yeah. So you moved back to the area to be near family. Um, why did you join dermatology plus plastic surgery? So the whole practice is the name of Doctor Saluja <laughs> has oh, obviously carried very much weight. <laughs> Um, and with me growing up in this area, your name has been one that's talked about, and this is not just, this is kudos to you and the name and, and everything that you stand for. And How much did I pay you to say this? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's true. You, you, you've, you're a name that everyone trusts, and that carried a lot of weight with me and who I decided to want to, I, I really wanted to vet the same way you were vetting me. Yeah. We were both vetting each other. and. And honestly, the, the whole practice that you have cultivated, and when we sat down and we ended up talking about the three agreement or the four agreements, um, it was it was just like I, I thought that was one of the most amazing moments to to sit yeah. down and with you and Dr. Novo and have that realization. It was it was something special. Yeah, we are only as good as our team, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think we make a phenomenal team. And so, thank you for joining. Yeah. thanks for having um, me. Okay, so why did you get into aesthetic dermatology and? and skin health. As a physician assistant, you yeah. have your choice of fields. So having a bit of a dual trained background in both plastic surgery and dermatology, I think was really the, the, the perfect accumulation of understanding to yield aesthetics because my job is to be a person to educate people. And my goal in this is I really want to, like m the happiest patient I have is a well-educated patient. And for mm -hmm. me to know how to best take care of your skin and from a surgical standpoint, what are our options that give you the best answer for you? Not just what I can offer, but what should be offered as a whole. I think that that's incredibly important for each patient. Um, I'm, I'm very much an adv advocate towards education on my patients. I really wanna make sure that you don't just, you're not just doing something because I'm telling you to do it. I want you to understand why we're doing it because I think that it, it gives you the best result. And that, yeah, because um, you're on board. You are. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Um, in the dermatology <coughs> world, tell us about your favorite treatments or your yeah. fa interests. What what do you naturally gravitate towards, or what do you think that people um, maybe haven't considered that they yeah. might might want to learn about? I think it's a really good point. So I think that the on a whole in in aesthetics, it's all transitioning to more biostimulatory medicine. We're trying to utilize products. We're trying to utilize uh, treatments to not only just say, hey, this looks better, but there's a continual effect to improve the quality of the skin, the look of the skin, and just the overall appearance of someone. So whether that be 
Sculptra or Radius, which are both. And those are injectable. Correct. The biostimulatory, you know, there's fillers and then there's Sculptra, which is going to stimulate collagen with time. Um, both are phenomenal agents. I mean, I always tell people there's really three things I do mm -hmm. aside from good skin care. Um, and I utilize, you know, I end up doing Dysport just to, you know, maintain my wrinkle lines. I use Sculptra. Which is Dysport helping with? So fine line wrinkles. It also helps to give me a little bit of a brow lift because I have a naturally heavier set, heavier okay. set brow. Okay. Um, so similar to Botox, it's just everyone has their own preference on that okay. one. Um, and then I end up utilizing like a cool peel at least once a year just to kind of stimulate collagen again. And that's uh, a laser, yep. so laser resurfacing. Yeah, with minimal downtime too. Uh, so not all lasers are created equal. You know, we always talk about the amount of downtime someone has and the amount of improvement they can have. Where I'm at in my, my life, I'm really trying to maintain. I'm, and I always have a delineation with my patients on whether or not we're trying to maintain or correct something. Mm -hmm. So the correction, obviously, there's a little bit more downtime with that. But with maintenance, I'm trying to just see the skin that I have and maintain it for a long time. I keep telling people I'm 45. I'm not. But <laughs> 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 it, the one field where you want to say you're older yeah. so that people can compliment you on how exactly. young you look. Exactly. Right? Um, so Cool Peel is our laser resurfacing device right. that helps with brown spots, fine wrinkles, yep. um, and also in Florida Sun Damage Matters. So it also helps with actinic keratoses, yep. which are the precancers. Yep. Um, it's a beautiful jack of trades. You know, a tip I'll tell patients who have health savings accounts or flex spending yeah. accounts that they can use those dollars towards their medical grade skin care yeah. and their lasers because we're improving skin health. Exactly. And yeah. in Florida, we know we need it. Yeah. What's your favorite injectable? Favorite injectable? So I really do like Renuva. Mm -hmm. Renuva is a different, it's, it's. A lot of people don't know about Renuva. Tell. They don't. So Renuva is unlike yes. anything on the market. It's not technically a filler. Mm -hmm. It's not technically a bioinductive agent. It's actually an allograft tissue. Um, so and what does that mean? It's a substitute. So basically there's fat grafting, which we can all kind of generally conceive as, you know, someone would have to go through the process of having liposuction to renew the fat, to re-inject. Um, and it does wonders. It stimulates growth factors. It, it literally almost gives you laser-like quality to the skin. It does phenomenal work. That's why a lot of plastic surgeons even utilize that for facelifts as well. So um, would could we say Renuva is like fat off the shelf? It is. Or it really you're getting is. Like it's, it's bypassing the product of, of the whole. It's getting straight to Z, not having to go X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So that's the beautiful part about this. And it comes in a syringe. And the, honestly, the comfort of You don't have to have the liposuction with it if you weren't Correct. wanting that. And as far as application, there's really no limitations. Really, the only areas that you would never inject it, uh, basically around the eyes and the lips. Uh, okay. Any other than that, it is where any natural organic. And how long fat does lives. it last? So they say it lasts up as long as fat lives, which is around 10 years. Yeah, so that's pretty right. Good. That's very unique. It is, and it it's the comfort of injection is just that of with any other filler. Any how other do you? Um, 10 years is great, yeah. but I might say, well, how do you? How do you make sure I don't look unnatural if yeah. I'm going to end up with a result for 10 years, that's potentially? Very true. And that's where we always start low and slow. You know, the best thing I can always offer is saying, hey, you know, based off whatever structural loss or structural loss we're seeing due to fat, we're going to base this in saying this is where we're going to start. We're going to start low. We're going to start slow. And I'm going to see you back in two to three months, see where we're at. And then at that point, we can always retreat. Um, the best thing, our goal in aesthetics is never to augment or or change who you are my personal thought process on this is really just maintaining you know and accounting for the structural loss that happens with time um, I always want to tell people you're still gonna look your generation but you're gonna look the best of your generation yeah. what about if you're uh, younger you haven't had much loss but mm -hmm. you want to enhance your beauty 100% can so we do that yep it's a different conversation yeah yeah so the interesting part with this is you can apply it in so many different ways. I mean, you can use Renuva and also other biostimulatory agents, uh, not only just in one area, but in multiple different areas. So for the face, we can reconstitute this in a way where it's blended down, and it really helps a lot with the smile lines, which people start seeing from early ages in the 20s because yeah. they smile so much. They're happy. Why not? Yeah, that's um, good. So it's a, it's a great option for something as simple as that. Neck, decollete, beautiful. You know, a lot of women, they end up sleeping on their side and they end up with the kind of deeper set V in the neck. Mm -hmm. um, those deeper set lines is a great, you know, it that's where Renuva I think really shines in something like that. Is your approach with men different? So yes and no. Y men with Renuva, no, but with aesthetics, yes, because our, our goals and objectives change. 
just from like a facial structure and facial balancing not only that but a muscle anatomy men just have stronger muscles so we kind of have to account for that and the appropriate angles angles are where male and female really differ you know for a female we would never want to lateralize a jawline and broaden make them that. a thick jaw exactly but for a male it's a very masculine feature and usually desired mm-hmm. yeah true true um besides besides renova cool peel mm-hmm. um ability to do skin cancer screening yeah. and the surgical experience what makes you unique so i think the unique component with me is i kind of dovetail back on the education <coughs> excuse me so education is really what i pride myself on with all my patients if i can sit down and have you understand this and i use a lot of analogies whenever i'm explaining something to a patient because i think you know i can talk and, and say big words and we all pay big money to learn these words but saying them isn't the same thing as explaining them to someone um that that little part of just education for patients i don't think a lot of providers take the time or they just don't have the the proper understanding or education to come with that and it takes a lot of work because you have to know everything about all the different procedures when then as you know in aesthetics there's new products coming out left and right and we have to be at the forefront of knowing every single one of those and to be able to compare and contrast and give recommendations and that's where I think I really differentiate myself and make myself a little bit more of a unique provider. It's not just because you come to me and you think, oh, he's a relatable guy. I'm flattered, but I think it's because- Yeah, it's more I'm than being relatable. It is. Yeah. It's, it's me being able to dig into it and explain this in a way that you can understand it without having to have a, you know, a proper medical background. Right, right. Tell, uh, regarding the education, can you tell us a little bit about the um, trainer side of yeah yes what does that look like for you one of the most um uh, one of my bigger accomplishments at least so far in my career has been to become a national trainer for galderma galderma is a company who makes not only disport which is a form of toxin similar to botox uh, but they also make the whole restylane line as well as sculptra so Mm -hmm. when i referenced earlier about me doing sculptra uh, that's one of the products that i can you know recommend and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth as a national trainer, I go around to multiple different facilities. I have my state licensure, not only here in the state of Florida, but also in California, where I go to practices. And I teach these providers on best practices, not only in techniques, but new products that are coming to market and really kind of the, the cutting edge uh, products that we get to use. Um, this actually, at the end of August, I'm going to New York, where there's a train the trainer event that Galderma hosts each year, where they bring in all of the trainers on a national level and they actually you know brings together and they teach us the new stuff that's coming out so it's a very exclusive event each year in each state they only had two trainers per year so i was very honored to be added two years ago yeah that's wonderful thanks um uh what would you say okay so what would you say to a patient who wants to be proactive in prevention they want to really minimize some of the things you do like fillers and yeah. botox yeah and they're you know we got overdone what about prevention we got we don't want to be overdone but what about prevention i may not i may want to delay for sure and especially living in florida Mm -hmm. i think that that is probably the most important conversation because much of the sun damage that we get is cumulative and you know the teens and 20s are not kind years to us so the earlier we start good skincare routines and good skincare products are incredibly important Um, vitamin c is a phenomenal i mean you you have to be on it Uh, if you're not then you're not taking care of your skin in the right way. There's a multitude of different skin cares. I mean, regarding tretinoin, making sure that you're, you know, as, as a comeolytic agent, which is something that's going to decrease your pore size, tighten your skin, also increase the aesthetics of your skin long term. That's a huge component to this. Um, a good sunscreen. People th- they think that all sunscreens are created equal or just because you buy Neutrogena, then that's the best one. But they don't read labels and they don't know the indications for each one. Um, and there's a lot of difference between a mineral-based one and a chemical-based sunscreen, mm-hmm. and people don't really realize that. So getting medical-grade qu- uh, quality skin care is incredibly helpful. Also, early skin, ca- skin checks, in my honest opinion. Right. Make sure you're maintaining this. And look, this is your time to get, you know, utilize, ask us questions. If there's one thing you've learned at this point is I like to talk, and I'm willing yeah. to give you as much information as possible. And if that's just from saying, hey, what sunscreen should I get? What skin care should I use? There's a multitude of things, and the reality of it is you can go on Amazon and spend thousands of dollars, and it's probably not the best skincare product for you uh, because it's not tailored to you and you're not having recommendations because there are minute things that everyone's skin's different. We want to be able to specifically pinpoint what that is. 
identifying early pre-cancers um, like AKs, you mm-hmm. know, that, that's incredibly important. And also giving different therapeutic options, you know, maybe freezing isn't the best answer. Maybe we use a topical, maybe we use blue light, maybe we use a handful of different interventions. Um, but in terms of the best way to maintain and best way to kind of get ahead and, and prevent that from happening where you don't have to do a lot of this stuff, it really stems around the beautiful parts of Florida, which is the sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, right. So being moderation and yep. being careful and thinking about your lifestyle. Exactly. Um, and then maybe starting yeah, early boat dysport and oh, a yeah. little bit of stimulatory agent yeah, and is also preventative. 100%. Right? You, you yeah. can start those early in small quantities. Yeah. yeah the, the, the typical dosing for like FTA indications, it doesn't mean it's meant for everyone. A lot of times it's just saying, hey, I have a little bit more tension in my 11 lines. I, I had a patient as a follow-up. First time she had uh, Botox and she came back today and she was a little nervous the first time and she was shocked. She was she loved the results. She really did. And even her, her mother actually complimented her on it. And she said, you know, the one thing I didn't realize is how much tension I had and that release of tension where she doesn't feel like she's straining so much anymore, I think was the biggest eye opening uh, effect of Botox for it, which I thought was really, you don't hear that often. And yeah. then, uh, it, it was it was pretty neat. That is neat. Um, any closing thoughts for our listeners? Yeah. So my goal in aesthetics and skincare, the background that I carry, all of this is, is really just to yield the best result to every one of my patients. My goal in this is to allow you for you to be your best self. I'm not here to change. I'm not here to modify. I'm purely here to just listen to you and then convert what you're saying into what can be done. I think that's probably one of the most uh, complex things to do. Um, and I do, you know, I do think when patients come in and you make an attempt I d- and it works great, like this patient, mm-hmm. great. But I think sometimes a follow-up appointment that requires additional treatment oh yeah. is needed. And I think for um, our listeners to understand that it's a relationship that's built over time. Yeah. And we may start with our best educated treatment yeah. plan, but then have to modify. So if this uh, you know, patient of yours was happy with her Botox, came back, mm-hmm. and didn't have the results she needed, that sometimes means you do need a higher dose, or yeah. it sometimes means you need a different product. Yeah. And being honest and open, that communication. Oh, it's a two-way road. I tell everyone this important is important to then modify yep. because that's the. So it's getting to work together. Yeah. And it's 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 the communication goes two ways. It does. Yeah. Um, that's a wrap on my end. Yeah. Um, any anything we've missed covering? Honestly, if you ever have any questions, concerns, anything, I'm always open for consultation. And um, you know, as I said before. Clearly, after listening to this, you probably heard that I can talk fairly well, uh, or at least talk a lot. So um, if anyone has any concerns or questions, I'm always open to have Perfect. open forum. Perfect. Max's yeah. office phone number is 321-241-1160, and email is info at foryourbestself.com. Thank you for listening in to myself and Max, and we look forward to next time. Thank you.